Hey there, boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today, the Duff Dog and I are gonna see if we can get a 1963 Buick Riviera back on the road that hasn't been running since the 1990s. And as you can tell, she's a barn find. Here it is, 63 Buick Riviera. He got it 20-ish years ago. Somebody already started doing body work. Quarters are pretty rusty. Should have a 401 nail head in it. Guy said he had it running, drove it in here. It's a 63, he's got the headlights in the grill. The uh, clamshell headlights are what the 64 and 5 had. I think it's got 95 license plates. Pretty new for us. Yeah, he's pretty much loaded up, typical. Buick things, bucket seats, console shift. I don't know if it's got air conditioning power windows. Let's get it out of here and check it out. We gotta move a whole bunch of toys and case pedal tractor and the old hub bar sign. Ooh, look at these, LT1 valve covers. I think he said those were off his 73 Camaro he had. Tow hitch even, dang. Dang. All right, let's get her out in the open, see what we got. Well, we're back. I brought reinforcements. We got, I don't know, Mopar Madman. Are you, are you KG now? I don't care. KG and MRC. Oh, yeah. Look at all the room for activities in here. We should do a will it run on a 500 International. What about a spray coupe? It's the Spra Coupe. Shh, don't ruin it for him. Well, oh, it looks like it's missing a cowl thing. I think that back tire is going to much air. Well, you got the uh, compressor. Let's see what happens. See the tire in? That's fine. That's just the tread. Oh, sure. You're good. Sure. This was a black car, eh? You know how to run that thing? Can you buy the rims? I have one. Here. You just had to say how cool this car was. Wow, totally screwed that one up. <laughs> it's a low rider. A arm brake? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh. Oh, pull a lower control arm? Maybe the ball joint just, I think it's just the ball joint. Go on the balance over here. Okay, let's just assess the situation. Oh yeah, ball joint. <sighs> that was weird that it would go Yeah. right there. Never had that happen dragging cars out. That ain't bad. That's an $8 repair. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't want to screw anything else. Up. Well, I don't think you want to set it down. You kind of want to keep it elevated now. Right. Keep forgetting I'm running the show. Yeah. How sad is that? You're kind of in charge of this. Clearly working out well. I'm only, I'm only blowing one tire. One, Not even a tire, ball joint. just a ball joint. Duff, what are you doing, buddy? I was running. If I was going somewhere, I was running. Guy, you got hydraulics in this thing or what? <laughs> hey, Mortski, all, uh... are you jacking? Yes. <laughs> Tell you what, it's hard to find good help these days. We've done 80% of the work, so yeah. I got it all on video. You didn't do nothing. No, you didn't. You hey, got actually, it all on video and Chin is gonna stuff. edit it so it makes it look like we've done nothing but sat around, so. Had a boy, Chin. What were you gonna say? So the old man that owns this place did most of the work. That's a fact. I ran the telehandler. Yeah, he brought, the big, he brought the big equipment. Yeah, well, you tore that wheel right off. Uh, well, I had to do something wrong. <laughs> Well, I mean, you get what you pay for, right? <laughs> yeah, I haven't gotten paid at all. <laughs> oh, about that, we'll square up later. <laughs> all right, here's the 63 Riviera three-wheeler, Trimoto. It's a Yamaha Trimoto. Ready to go. Look at the barn dust, it's just thick on this thing. Five of 95, May of 95. She's been off the road for, what's that? 
27 years. Oh, that's cool when you get there. Badge right in the middle of the taillight. She's a little chewy, but she's a rib. Let's head her home. So we got this 1963 Buick Riviera home. Let's take a look at this thing. The Duff is not impressed. He had more fun getting it, now he's, he's over it. Well, yeah, we, uh, we knew that this thing wasn't that great going into it. Oh, and it was also a lot dustier. We got some rain, so we ruined our pressure washing sequence. So I guess we'll just have to leave that to the experts down in Oklahoma. Yeah, there's a little mud in there. This guy did some terrible body work. Not the guy we got it from, but uh, Buckets, not him. But the guy who did this should be named Buckets for the buckets of Bondo that he used. Last tagged, May of 95, so 27 years. Anybody know anything about these license plates? Usually North Dakota plates are, you know, ABC123, not ND, and then four digits. I remember our local deputy, she had those license plates on her personal vehicle, so I feel like it was like some type of government employee thing. I don't know. Anywho, the, uh, I don't know if you call that a whiskey dent. The pot metal there is broken. 63, I believe, was the only year where they had the headlights there. And then 64 and 5 was like a clamshell. This opened up and the headlights were back there. And maybe that was just an option. I don't know. Those are a little bit cooler, but I really don't mind a 63. Because I think, I think this is what Crazy for Swayze drove in a roadhouse. Yo. What well, I look like a valet. Keep it, it's yours. We blew ourselves a ball joint, pulling it out of the weeds. So that's not good, is it, Duff? No. Yeah, you can see the cup just peeled right out of that ball joint. We got a new one coming. It's been sitting on the trailer for a week because, you know, it's we don't have a good way to get it off the trailer. It does have those sweet 45 fin Buick aluminum brake drums. So, I mean, if all else fails, we got that. It's got some later model Oldsmobile hubcaps not in love with i think it's missing one typical gm rot in the dog legs big old slobber of mud there some rivet action going on there i don't know real riveting <laughs> i guess all the trim is in the trunk but this guy said he never had the trunk open or he looked in the trunk and there was stuff in the trunk so he assumed it was all there some rust in the lip there i don't know if it was a vinyl top car if they just had trim there Hard to say. It was black with white interior. What? Oh, you want me to open the door? Hey, we gotta get it off the trailer. I don't think the door will quite open. Yeah, see? We gotta get it off the trailer first. I don't remember. We, we did try pumping some tires up. It seemed like some of them held there, but apparently that one's not holding there. Yeah, rot in the quarters. Uh, more riveting action going on there. A little whiskey dent in this corner. I think the Cadillac that we got from him had the Amico thing on there too. That was, that was pretty common maybe. I don't know. What do you think? Man, these, the, the, these cars are just pure sex appeal. I, I like how, you know, it's got the little slim bumpers, but it's actually a full bumper. It's got the wraparound bumper guard on it. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty freaking cool. How's it look under there? Good? Looks like she had a duels with glass packs. Oh yeah, we love glass packs, don't we? Trailer hitch, even though the only thing this thing pulled was tail, right there, duff. Oh, this quarter is even rustier, especially in that area. And uh, they, they attempted some mud slathering there as well. I don't know if they make quarter panels for these or not. These are a five on five bolt pattern. I don't know if they're left hand thread lug nuts on that side, but same bolt pattern is like a two wheel drive Chevy pickup. Most of the Buick, Olds, Pontiac, big cars were that bolt pattern and then 71 to 76 full size GM cars as well. A little pitting action going on there. I don't know. I don't know what we got ourselves into, but it's probably the only Riviera we'll ever be able to afford. Is this a power antenna? Kind of looks like it. There's a cover down there. The valance for the wipers are missing. The coon turds are highly present. However, big old slather of Bondo there. Like, oh, oh, look, you got the, the wormholes on the backside. And uh, yeah, you can see they, oh my gosh, how thick is that enough? Oh yeah, that's that's a half inch thick. What's the thickest you're supposed to go? Three A's? Yep, went beyond that. At least they took her down to bare metal when they did it. <sighs> Laziness, we do better body work than that. Ain't saying much, is it? Haven't even opened the hood. These things could come with a 401 or a 425 nail head. I think they just have two speed something glide transmissions. Maybe it's got a three speed, I don't know. But yeah, these could have dual, a 425 with dual quads or I don't know if you could get the dual quads on 401, but it could be dual four barrels under there for all we know for all we know there's no engine in it 
but we got to figure out a way to make this thing come off the trailer. So first thing, let's see if we can get some wind in the tires and then we're going to have to see if we can't get something underneath that wheel to make it roll. All right, I'm done rambling. Let's get to work. Of course, the tire that we don't even really care about holds there. Imagine that. I'll get the chains too. No Oh man, we're getting awful close to getting into the fender there, Duff, but that's how these things should sit, just tuck and wheel, slammed right down there. The problem is the car wants to roll better than the jack, so when the car rolls, then it comes off the jack. And we'll, we'll get her fingered out here. Yeah, I just wanted to admire. That's how that thing needs to sit on air. All right, let's get this thing unloaded. Should be easy, right? How about that, Duff? We got it off the trailer. Nobody died. We got all our appendages that we started with. I know you don't have any thumbs, but the tire's leaking terribly. That's what you're hearing. And this thing is a real eyesore. But at least we got our trailer back so we can go haul some more junk, right? Right. That's, that's literally why I'm unloading it, so I can get, get more kids. Stay off the Facebook place. You find things that you don't need. Anywho, the wheel kind of recentered itself so that's good what do you think all right let's get after it we no more than went and hooked up the expedition tow pig and that tire is about flat and i bet you can guess what the right front's doing we could hear that one she's down too no worries let's get the hood open on this thing and see what we got going on underneath there all right you do it it's all you buddy you are good at that that is an awful big air cleaner. Is there two four barrels hiding underneath that thing? I'm just trying to take this all in. Orange power steering pump. We, we love painting things, and I really love it when people paint things obnoxious colors, but I guess that's GM orange. Let's, let's check her out. Uh, she's dry, so painting it clearly doesn't fix your leak. It's got power brakes, single reservoir, fruit jar, Master cylinder out with the electric brake switch. The switch is on the front of it. I didn't know GM did that, especially into the 60s. Usually they had a pedal operated switch. I thought, again, what do I know? What is this giant reservoir? Looks like she's for vacuum. I suppose this thing has a hog A cam in it. So, you know, you had to reserve what little vacuum you had for the brakes. Dual horns. It's got a alternator. It's probably one of the first years of alternators. I think it, this might be the first year of alternators for GM anyway. Chevrolet, what I mean by GM. The OptiClean bottle bracket is there. The bottle is missing. I believe this would have been an externally regulated alternator. I don't know what that wire went to, but it's not hooked up. Is that for a regulator? Who knows? Nope, looks like the regulator's over there. Horn relay's there. Jimmy, check the dipstick. And she's pretty low, but it looks clean what's there. And it's leaning this way, so yeah, not real good. I don't know how to tell the difference between a 401 and a 425, so take my word for it. No flexi hose. It's got the Gates pressurized cap. No flexi hose on the bottom. No coolant also. Great, grand, wonderful. Good, great, grand, wonderful. What is this? Oh, if I can't hold the camera and uh, the stream light. You wanna go grab me a Cyclops? You're a good kid. These things are great. The magnets are great. They're also great for sticking to vehicles and driving them down the road for many, many miles and it's still being there. So if you're missing a Cyclops, go outside at night and you might just find it stuck to the bottom of your ramp truck. Tech tip of the day. They got a little amp gauge here that's not wired to anything. That's a, that's a oldie. I don't know why that was in there. Probably because it wasn't charging. Probably because they didn't have this plugged in. <laughs> Maybe that's why they parked it, who knows? Well, let's get the air cleaner off. See what the carburetor looks like. Good news is the air cleaner's there and this hood was really hard to get open, Duff said. So, I mean, that's probably what kept the air cleaner on it 
all these years. It does have a plastic fuel line. Buckets said that he drove this thing to where it was parked. He said it ran really good. So I have no reason to believe he wouldn't lead us astray. All right, let's see what it looks like underneath the air cleaner. And that is a <coughs> giant air cleaner. Is there a mouse house inside? Survey says. Name something that follows the word pork. You pine. Huh? Pork. <laughs> he said, cupine. <laughs> well, there's no mouse house in there. I bet when we pull. Oh, this son of a bitch. Oh, yeah. Fievel has packed the air cleaner. I believe this is a Carter AFB. That's what we're calling it. It's my show. I say what I want. Well, the accelerator linkage is loose. Spark plug wires look like they're all there and not chewed off. I mean, they are laying on the exhaust manifold, however. So we should probably relocate. Gosh, a ton of them are. It's like they've, they're pretty fresh too. I mean, 27 years ago, they were probably brand new. Fuel line is even still flexible. No, just kidding. All the flex is in this fuel filter. I think I found what that connector was supposed to go to. The water temp sensor. There's some, some poopy and some rocks and stuff on the valley pan. For those of you that aren't familiar with Cadillacs, early Hemis, Buicks, this is a valley pan. Usually the intake manifold on like a small block Chevy or a FE Ford goes from head to head and covers from china wall to china wall but some of these engines i think y blocks have it too they have this valley pan down here so just one more spot to leak and get full of crap anywho this is a nail head uh if you didn't watch my 66 buick electra video it's because they got really tiny valves and they're like vertical that's the easy way to identify these the valve covers are vertical i think that's why they call them a nail head because they got really tiny valves anyway they're cool looking engines uh, early ones had the bell housing cast into the back of the engine block. So you have to run either a goofy adapter or those early transmissions. These ones, the bell housing is not integral, so you can run a lot of different transmissions or there's, there's more options for adapters and such. Anywho, let's see if it turns over. What are the odds of that? I'm saying really good. I can't remember if the blast vehicle is locked up or not. Uh, it didn't run. It ran very well. It just, it just had a rod knock that was something fierce. Oh no, come on. There we go. Oh yeah. She's loose-ish. Seems how this engine is hard to replace. Early, expensive, with our past history. We're gonna pull the spark plugs out and spray some lube down there and then crank it over. And then we'll be able to look at the spark plugs and kind of see how they look, if there's been moisture, if it's been burning oil, if they're new, I don't know. And the other thing is we got to take the plug wires off anyway, because whoever routed them laid them right on the exhaust manifold. So that shows me, they're not really melted through. So that kind of tells me that whoever put these plug wires on didn't run it for very long after that. So it'd be a good opportunity to do that. That and they're just so gosh dang easy to get at over here. Uh, on this side, just about as easy. This vacuum canister gets in the way of a couple of them. Shouldn't be bad at all. I'm, I'm looking forward to this. So don't treat me wrong. That's what we, should we call this thing? Should we call it Swayze? Should we call this thing Roadhouse? What are we gonna, what are we gonna name this thing? Comment down below. You know, it's, it's, it's Swiss cheesy. You know, the Swiss Roadhouse. Pat Swayze had a mullet. It's a Riviera. It's a mouse house. I don't know, you put them all together. Who's that guy with the, the sweet, Sam Elliott, the sweet mustache. Sam Elliott's a Riviera, I don't know. The Roadhouse Riviera? Nah, I feel like that's probably already taken by that car. You guys think about it. I'm gonna go get some spark plugs out. Well, what's the firing order on a nail head? I'm not saying the last guy got them on right, but if Bucket said it ran well, then they should have been right. So, doesn't say on the intake. I feel like we tried figuring this stuff out last time. That we got one of these running. We just lay these all here, and they're all different lengths. 
So they should all just lay back on there. Same way, right, Duff? Yeah. Well, they're all ACs, so that's good when they match. It usually means that somebody wasn't swapping spark plugs and they weren't a cheapskate. A little sooted up. Not bad, though. Hopefully the rest look all, all the same. I feel like we had a stuck valve on that nail head, did we not, Duff? Oh, dude, look at the valve cover gaskets, like, silicone. Again, a little sooty, not bad. Usually that sootiness on these cars, if they ran a pretty long life, like this thing was 32 years old and they parked it, is it just kind of got idled around a bunch, in and out of buildings, on and off trailers, stuff like that. And uh, it runs real rich. And maybe just the carburetor was that poorly tuned. Oh, that one's... Got a little corrosion on her. So hopefully that doesn't mean a ton of moisture got in there. But usually that is what it means. Also, you want to make sure these ceiling washers stay with the spark plugs. Otherwise, if we screwed a different plug into that hole, we'd be doubling up the washers. And if we screwed this plug into another hole, we'd have no ceiling washer. So always check. Make sure these non-tapered spark plug holes you got your washer on there and that you're using the right type of spark plugs. These are R44 S's, in case you were wondering. What do you got going on down there? You just checking the oil, ball joints? Yeah, figure out that ball joint for us. Hopefully we didn't screw up the tie rod ends. Same deal over here. Hopefully our spark plug wires are all different lengths and then we can just lay them back the way they need to be wouldn't that be nice like, oh this car doesn't have air conditioning dang it that's what was in the way on that 66 the ac compressor was up here looks good also i noticed the heater hoses going to the heater box here but there's also another set of Heater holes connections that are not hooked up, so I don't know. These things must add fancy heaters. Maybe there was like rear heat or something, but I think that would go underneath the car into the back seat. Who knows? I don't speak fluent Buick. I know just enough to be dangerous. Kind of about like everything. I have fooled a few people that think I know stuff. It's really all in the presentation. Oh, well, we didn't get the washer on the last one. I was just telling you guys about that. And then you let me forget. And it won't come out of there. Son of a biscuit. Oh well, we gotta remember to put that spark plug in that hole. What a silly place to run a power steering goes. Right over the valve cover. Alright, they all look about the same other than that. Number eight cylinder. Had a little humidity on there. Well, let's spray some croil down the cylinder holes. And go from there. Oh, you're really deep under there. What are you finding? This ball joint's ready to let loose too? Oh, that's good to know. Oh, perfect. Two black battery cables. Did GM not even use a red one from the factory? Come on. Cooper is our battery sponsor this week. Not Cooper tires, just some Nice individual whose nickname happens to be Cooper. So we gave him a Cooper Tires decal. Yeah, we should probably clean those up. So thank you to Cooper for sponsoring our battery of this week. Well, no smoke. That's good, I think. So the starters on these Buicks, I do know a lot about starters, more than I should. The starters on these Buicks are on the driver's side. And uh, most of the stuff we work on, small block Fords, <laughs> do we work on those LSs, small block Chevys? They're on the passenger side. The reason that's an issue is when you put these in a hot rod, your steering kind of gets in the way, so something to look out for. And if you look at a lot of these guys who do Buick swaps, they have like cowl steering and stuff to get around that. So I know the starter's down there, and here's this purple wire right here. So that should be our starter wire, so we can probably just jumper that if there is no keys in it. Oh, there is a key in it though, Duff. Oh, it is, it is ripe in here. 
yeah, you want to get in and check it out. So I guess according to Iowa Classic Car Ryan, you can tell GM bucket seats because they tip at an angle, you know, more room to get the big gals in the back seat. Oh, look at that cigarette lighter in the back. Got these cool little consoles. Kind of a bucket seat back there. Oh, look at those chrome aftermarket speakers, Duff. Swanky. Riviera waterfall. Uh, a lot of mouse house up there. Ugh, it's so bad. I wonder what this switch did. Is that for the uh, mood lighting? Gonna need a lot more of these things. Another switch down here. Huh, well, horn don't work. Would you hear that? She cranks stuff. Sounds pretty good too. Tilt, sweet. Looks like 45,510. Oh, I don't know. Oh, it's got a dash mat. It kind of kept the dash in okay-ish shape too. Doesn't have the day night mirror. It does have power windows. Power bucket seats, I would assume. Maybe, maybe not. Nope, no power buckets that I can tell. I don't want to stick my hand under there and find out. Forward, up, back. Oh, look at that, it is a power seat. It's trying to move, we're just gonna leave it at that. You dig the back seat? Is there some uh, interesting <laughs> smells back there? Yeah, I bet. It looks like they put an aftermarket knee off temp and oil pressure gauge. Well, I guess that makes sense why they didn't need that one hooked up anymore. Oh, another switch. Hey, the horn does work. Sweet. I don't know what this does and I probably should stop switching it. Wipers, lights, all the heater controls are up top underneath the dash. Oh, there's the antenna controls, courtesy lamps, vents. Oh, the courtesy lights work. Sweet. Sweet. Uh, the antenna is not happy though. Imagine that. Is there a glove box up there? Oh yeah. Oh, trunk release. It's probably vacuum. Oh, look at that. I never messed around with a uh, vacuum trunk release. I'll have to get a runner to test that out. Ugh. Is there a counts? Ugh. Is there a lid here? Yes. Okay, there's another key. Did GM have two different keys back then? Remote mirror? No mirror on that side. Ugh. Probably, probably gonna have to shower. Come on, baby. Yes! Oh, there's our missing hubcap. Another flat tire. Ugh. That doesn't look like a lot of trim. I feel like, ooh, old Hastings ATF filter box. There's our mirror. There's a busted Riviera emblem. It's a... Uh, Riviera. Was it Geraldo Rivera? Should we call this thing Geraldo? Oh, that's a stupid name. Well, we're, well, we're thinking of names here. This thing uh, might have named itself. John! I mean, I think we can come up with a better name than that, but John it is. Look at this. Ellendale Equipment. And then it, that came from uh, the Hub City store in Aberdeen, South Dakota. So, so this car came from way up by New Rockford, North Dakota, way up there. And uh, Aberdeen, South Dakota is way down there. And Ellendale is just up the road. So this car might have some semi-local-ish history because it came from three hours away and Smellendale is only an hour away. Maybe this car drove right by us one time. All right, enough rambling. Let's see if we find a name on this. Well, I found a name on that box. It says James and it says John. So we got all kinds of options for names here. Looks like these are the vents that go in front of the windshield. That's the wiper squirter there. There's the valance up there. Hopefully they haven't painted that yet. Primed it. Well, maybe there is all the trim there. I don't know. Wheel well trim. I don't know enough about these cars to, to know what trim is what. What is this? Seat belts? Some type of rubber belting. Seat belting. Oh, those are kind of swanky. Are those factory? Does anybody know? OJ glove? Nope. Another seat belt. Okay, it's hot, disgusting, and it's late. I think we're just gonna cut our losses for the night. Please tell me my dog isn't, yep, still in there. God, you are a disgusting dirt ball. Let's go to bed, come on. Let's go get cleaned up. Come on, want a treat? Sucker. Yes, I'll give him a treat. We're gonna unhook the battery. Probably spray some more luby dube in the cylinder walls. This thing cranks over really good, sounds good. So I think we'll uh, check for spark. Tomorrow, or whenever we get back to it, and go from there. 
make sure to turn your cyclops off so it ain't dead because if they're dead and you leave them stuck to something they're real hard to find even though they are glow in the dark neon green that's the one time being neon is acceptable when it's like a, a light or a tape measure that's the best thing you can do with a tape measure is get a neon orange one or green or whatever yellow so you can find it all right enough rambling i'm gonna go get cleaned up all right we are back and as you can see the tow pig and trailer are gone we got some more junk to work on another day but anyway we're back to working on the riviera which has no name the riv with no name is that what we call it the riv with no name by america i don't know i don't know what we're calling it james as far as we can tell was the, the previous owner before buckets so maybe we'll call it james jimmy jimmy riv anywho uh, before we start cranking it over, let's unhook the fuel line. So just in case there's any 1995 petrol in there. Who's president then? Probably Clinton. Before we get any Clinton administration fuel up into our valve train and carburetor, let's snip that one. Yeah, that would be a good idea. I do believe. Yay for constant tension clamps. Oh, that one actually came right off. It was one of the flat metal ones and not the ugly uh, wire style ones. Oh man, fuel did drip out of there. Yuck. But that's some nasty stuff. Let's get the rest of that fuel hose off of there. So when we get our boat tank, we just hook her up. It's actually somewhat pliable, surprisingly. Come on now. It's okay, not real supple. Can you smell it, Duff? There's about 47 drips down there. And it is putrid. Yuck. I think now we're gonna try to tap into that purple wire over here on the inner fender with our loser switch and get her cranking over and we'll uh, do the old Morsky thumb compression test. Seem like a good idea? I think so too. Look up our battery cable here. I think if we unhook this and we provide power to that, it should crank over. Let's do a little test run here with my rat's nest of jumper wire. Swap that to that spade, not the David spade. From what I've heard, you're using your paper not for writing, but for rolling doobies. And they say to the positive, and we hook these two together, we hit our loser switch, and nothing. Let's check our connection. There we go. GM like to use purple for crank. All right, let's uh, get our fingers dirty. Oh my goodness. Seven is strong, five is pretty freaking weak. Three's good. Yeah, five is not happy. One is good. So far, just five. All right, let's do two. The old two hole. Good to go. Four is not real great, but way better than five. Six is good. Eight's not real great either. Eight ain't real great. Well, I think it's good enough to run. Let's let's see. Hopefully we don't have any valves hanging up. Ah, I'm like kidding. Let's pull the valve covers off and just make sure that the valves are moving on all those cylinders before we screw anything up. Because we're good at screwing things up. I'm not proud of that, so Let's see if we can't prevent that. I'm gonna clean off my fingers so it doesn't look like I've been doing, you know, mechanic work with them. Good news, nail heads only got two bolts holding the valve cover down. Well, that's easy. Bad news is there's a bunch of crap on the top of the valve cover you gotta take off. Take off, you hosers. Geez, now that hoser's growling. Yeah. Take off, will you? We're doing our movie. Don't wreck our show, you hoser. So we're gonna pull this vacuum line off. Oh, oh, just kidding. We're gonna break the fitting right off. Oh my gosh. You know, we're just trying to do our part here. That's gonna be a big old vacuum leak. So let's just break it off and fix it the right way. Maybe. That's what happens when the guy who always says to use two wrenches doesn't use two wrenches. Oh, it looks like it's been, yeah, that is not the right fitting in there anyhow. This looks like a pipe thread fitting, and it's got an inverted flare in there, so somebody's already hosed that up. It wasn't my fault. All right, is this gonna come off? Oh yeah, walks right off there. Wow, it is surprisingly clean under there. 
looks like cast aluminum rockers. There's like almost zero sludge inside this valve cover. So that's good. So let's pull this side off. Let's see if our rockers are moving up and down, specifically the number five bit. Everything looks good over there. Well, all our rockers are moving up and down, so I think we'll stick some plugs in it. And before we do that, let's see if we got spark. All right, let's see if we got spark after sitting for 27 years. Of course not. All right, I'm gonna have to give her the old Morski flick. Now let's see if we got some spark. She's pretty weak. Might have to actually file them down a bit. I'll hit her with the Hansi file, see if she's any better. Oh, yeah. All kinds of sparkage. Now let's put her all back together, give her some hot sauce and see what happens. I think we're ready to hook up some hot sauce to this hot rod. I checked the firing order. It's one, two, four, eight, seven, five, six, three. Something like that. It says it on the valve cover, in case you wanted to know. One, two, seven, eight, four, five, six, three. And the thing with these Buicks is they're backwards. Bass backwards. One, three, five, seven, two, four, six, eight. And you gotta watch out on the internet. There's some people that think that it's one three five seven two four six eight so you gotta be careful don't believe everything you read on the internet just because there's a picture with a quote next to it abraham lincoln anyway it's one two seven eight four five six three and i had the numbers five and seven or no six and eight mixed around, so good thing I checked myself. Those two plug wires are really close to the same length. 50, 50, 90 year old. You got 50, 50 odds, and 90% of the time, this guy and you are probably wrong. So I'm gonna go find some hot sauce. Also, I guess, before we get to the hot sauce, I took and put a eighth inch, is that eighth inch? I don't know, eighth inch pipe plug in there. So we don't have a ginormous vacuum leak, so we'll have to find a different fitting there if we wanna have power brakes. But anywho, Let's get some fuel hooked up to this son of a biscuit and see what happens. Got our boat tank plumbed up with our Amazonia fuel pump. I just went right to the carburetor instead of going through the fuel pump because this line is not looking so hot and that fuel filter looks even less lukewarm. So let's light this son of a biscuit up and see what happens. I'm betting fuel is gonna spray all over, you know, from different orifices. Hey, at least the pump's working. Oh, I can hear filling up. Any bets on if the accelerator pump works? Not hearing anything. I don't see any fuel coming up in there either. Oh, maybe just a little bit. Oh, there she's leaking by. All right, let's kill the pump and power up the ignition. Look at that. This thing hasn't even fired yet and it's already Shooting mouse house out of the exhaust pipe. This should be a real firework show back here. Maybe we should, yeah, we're barely on the stick. Let's drizzle a quart of oil in there. Let's see how this goes. Let's put a valve cover on, because it's not going so hot. At least Buick had a notion to put the filler cap on the valve cover instead of the intake. About 1963. Now, we're just gonna spill it. Because I'm like the worst pourer ever. Pretty sure there's a drunk in Ireland right now that I 
We're better than me. Oh, see, I told you. Good news is the exhaust manifold should be well lubricated. There's our cap right where I left it. Let's give a shout out to the design engineer who created this. One piece radiator hold down slash tool tray slash minimal fan shroud protected unit. That's, this is great. I set my spark plugs on there, my oil caps. I stick the magnet to the camera on that thing. You know, it's probably gonna save my finger from going in the fan. It was at this moment that he knew he f***ed up. Because we got to keep all those that we can. All right, no more praise and engineers. Let's hear this thing run or something. Fuel pump's on. Let's do this. And we don't have slingshot anymore. Try number two. Slingshot engage. Slingshot engage. We know we don't have accelerator pump, so let's just feed it ourselves. She's bottle fed. Let's see if we still got sparkage. Lots of spark. So then what? Need more fuel? Shout out to that starter. That thing is strong. It's trying to go. I don't think it helps that a couple cylinders are low, low, low on compression. Well, let's let that starter cool off a second. Maybe we washed out the cylinder walls and they're, I don't know. We're gonna try some, some dryer fire, some brake cleaner. Which I don't have good luck with. I don't know why we're doing it. Because I don't have ether, because John Deere makes the only good ether, and I'm too afraid to walk in that store and get bent over to buy a $42 can of ether. I don't know. It's probably not that bad. Close. Yeah, you, know, you see how it's like woo 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 woo. You know what I'm. You know what I'm. You know the noise I'm making. That means it's got some good cylinders and some not some good cylinders. You know it turns over hard and it turns over slow. Hard slow. It's not the starter. It's the dead holes. That's what we should name our band, Duff. The dead holes. The dead cylinders. I like the dead holes better. Let's go back to gas. I like gas better. Maybe we need to turn the fuel pump back on. Son of a biscuit, she's close. And that, that starter is close to death too. It is smoking away down there. Let's hope we don't get to that point. I suppose if we put some oil down some cylinders, that would help. Somebody says you gotta put uh, number two cycle stroke oil in your hot sauce. Maybe we'll do that while we're out in the starter cool. We got some Super Tech TCW3. I'm pretty sure that's from my snowmobile days 10 years ago. Good thing oil doesn't go bad, right? I mean, it's a million year old dinosaur anyway. A little's good, a lot's better. And then you get this pretty purple drank. I want that purple stuff. Maybe our timing's off. Oh, it can't be. I mean, it can be.
It says we have very minimal oil pressure, but uh, I believe that is wrong because that's oil spraying everywhere. Oh no, uh, I'm gonna stop that. There will be no Exxon Valdez happening on my watch. One of the worst oil spills in US history. Look at that. We are saving the baby penguins. One floral pattern towel at a time. So I'm an idiot, and I thought that was just oil from the rockers splashing around over here. Remember how they had those fancy gauges in the dash? Well, yeah, guess what he used? The clear plastic oil line. And you know how much we hate those. I think I hate those worse than flexi hoses. Definitely worse than flexi hoses. Spend the extra 10, 12, 20 dollars and get a copper line. These things are not good. I don't even think you can run them at racetracks. So, I mean, NHRA, they know what's up. And that's maybe why, now that you say that, <laughs> Buckets told me about this. He says, yeah, you can't run it for very long because it sprays oil all over. And that explains why it was a quart low on oil. So I'm gonna find another fitting, probably about the same size as that eighth inch one that we just put in the intake. And we're gonna plug that out. And I'm gonna turn this fuel pump off too before we flood the engine. Yeah, the thing runs good, real good. I'm gonna get that plugged and we're gonna run her again. And I wish we didn't have to shut it off because I worry they won't start again. I wanna get some heat into this thing, you know, to loosen up them valves and rings and everything else. But at the same time, we should probably get some coolant. In. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. First issue to address is uh, Old Faithful back here. We're gonna cap that off because we don't want him going off again. Well, the good news is, I guess, is we got plenty of oil pressure. There's our culprit right there. For usual, I'm gonna do something I'm not proud of right here. We're gonna trim off that clear plastic line. I got these new ferrules on hand. I believe they're the same between brass and plastic lines. We're gonna trim that off so we got a nice, clean, flush new end on it. I'm gonna try to remember to slide this on there first, and then we're gonna tighten that up. And then we'll have an oil pressure gauge until that line fails again. And I'm, then I don't have to go and try to take out the tea that they got in there and re-plumb. Because they still got the, the oil pressure light hooked up, which the light was off on the dash. And it does work because when you turn the key on, it was on. So we know we got oil pressure, so we're good. And it's just really hard to get down there. It's a pain to work on this uh, oil pressure fitting. So we're going to actually have a gauge. We're going to hook her up. It's temporarily permanent. Yeah. There's nothing more permanent than temporary plumbing. Okay, just cut this guy off nice and straight. Drop the plastic down the carbonator. Slide her ferrule over it. Don't forget that. It's like brake lines in these. That's the fitting. This is the ferrule. These are a one-time use deal, so you get one shot at it. Feel around down there for the wet spot. Find the hole and just slip her right in. Woo! Swing! Swing! It's just a little 10 millimeter nut, so you don't have to get too wild with it. Slingshot, engage. <laughs> it's got a valve sticking open. You can see oil going up the oil line. She runs pretty good. 30 pounds oil pressure at idle. They don't, they don't sound seven ace bad. Woo, heard the air compressor kick on. I thought it was this thing rattling away. See, it's got the brake light on. Imagine that. Oh, it's got a clock, but the uh, oil light is not on. Sitting at 180 degrees, about 20 PSI's of oil pressure. That ain't bad at idle. You. It is disgusting in there. Do these windows work? Oh, yes. Oh. They don't even 
shut that bad. Perfect. I think we got an exhaust leak right in there though. No more leaks? You can't hear a little valve train action, but I think that's just because there's no rocker cover on it. And you can see they're getting plenty of oil up here, so that's muy bueno. This thing's gonna be good once we get a ball joint on it and uh, get that putrid smell out of the inside. It's, it's not good in there. Jeff said he wants me to check if his window goes down, because he said otherwise he ain't going with. All right, let's see what happens. Oh yeah, was there ever a doubt? Nothing but the finest 1963 GM electronics. for about 20 minutes longer than that actually according to the camera but everything's sounding pretty good she's just a hair under 200 oh that's 210 yeah she's getting a little bit warm not bad but it's it's hot in here there's no air moving so we're just gonna leave her at that for now let's we don't have a ball joint we got to put a valve cover on we gotta figure out something with the fuel system. We should see if that tank will clean up. It's got some stinky gas in it. And we gotta fix a couple tires. So we're gonna do that. Right, Duff? Right. Okay, tire time. This thing runs good though, real good. These things are supposed to be pretty torquey too. Like, what are they, 445 foot pounds of torque or something? Four and a quarter, I don't know, lots of torque. Let's take this tire over and put a tube in it. How about that? Because I'm betting it doesn't, Hold air without a tube for very long. Good idea? Good idea, he says. Ooh, left hand thread. Good thing I looked. Righty Lucy. Still feels weird. Just like kissing your sister. You know, Oklahoma things, Putin don't mind. Look at these ginormous brakes. I think these are like a 9.3 inch ring gear. 12 inch rear brakes. And look at those coil over springs. Oh yeah, nothing but the finest for the Buick. Oh man, just having four round tires, and four hubcaps, makes this thing look way more gooder. I wonder if we still get enough vacuum if this trunk pop will work. Uh, I'm guessing, oh, I bet it's not gonna work because I bet that big vacuum canister, which we don't have hooked up right now, has to be hooked up. That's what that's for, it's, it's for the trunk pop. Small part of it anyway, small part. Shoot, I was hoping to see one of those work for the first time. All right, let's stick the valve cover back on this thing. I cannot believe how clean that side is. This side isn't too bad, but that side is like spotless underneath that valve cover. This side's, she's, a, she's got a little build up in there, but still pretty dang good. Look up our PCV. This thing didn't look like it had much for blow by, so. That's good. Let's see if it develops it as we run it some more. Look well, here, what finally came in the mail, Duffelopagus. A Moog ball joint. Part number K5075. Made in USA. Nothing but the finest for Swayze over here. So let's get that in there so we can take this thing for a rip. Before we get started here, Click the link down below. Check out the new merch. 
we got the 71 Ford F100. These are the next level shirts. They're what I like. And uh, if you're next to L like me, get them a size bigger. You'll appreciate it. Unless you're one of them affliction shirt wearing types where you like your man boobs to be shown and whatnot. Got the same design in the back. Duffel up, I guess, riding in the back. If you would uh, support these shirts, maybe we'll actually be able to get the transmission fix in that pickup so it's got second and third gear. Right now it's only got, oh no, no, it's just third it doesn't have. It's got first and second. Maybe it's just a vacuum modulator, I don't know. Loud pipes save lives, right buddy? All right, let's get a ball joint in. Seriously, get a shirt. Or a mug, or a sticker. Left hand thread. We should probably get this jacked up a little bit higher and maybe get a jack sound under there. Just, you know, for S's and G's. Where do we even start? I've never fixed one that was completely busted off before. It's gonna either make it real easy or real hard. Let's see if the new one resembles the old one. Well, it looks like it's a press in. Say that because of the way that it is. This is an aspen. You can tell that it's an aspen tree because of the way it is. But no, really, there's no way to retain it other than to press it in. And that doesn't even look like a snap ring. So it must just press in. What else did they give us? A nut? Oh, several bolts. Grease cirque, a cotter key. Three bolts for some reason. My luck, somebody. Return this thing and put the wrong one in there. You ever had that happen? Whoever does that, they deserve to step on a Lego. So I'm guessing we gotta press that one out of there. Wouldn't you think, Duff? I don't know if I've ever done one of these on the car. So, this is gonna be new. This is what failed and uh, allow the center of our ball joints to crap itself. Oh, what? We gotta somehow push slash pull this out the bottom of the control arm. I'd like to say I think I got it figured out, but I'm pretty sure I don't. It's not gonna stop us from trying though. Sure, it'd be a lot easier on that big fancy hoist, maybe. I know I'd feel a lot more comfortable anyway. Okay, no, I don't have enough room to get my impact down here, so we're gonna have to do it the old fashioned way with a ratchet and a ratcheting wrench. All right. Something moved, I think. Let's take a look. Well, let's keep pushing on her. Push it. Push it real good. Push it. Oh, the BDVH impact would sure make a lot bigger work of this. Oh, my Lanta. Maybe we gotta push on something else. We bottomed out on that apparatus. Well, if we flip that son of a biscuit upside down, really are these kits are is just a big game of Tetris combined with battleships and uh, you're gambling with your teeth. No big deal. I think we got her. Yay! Yay! There it is, that's what's left of the bottom half of the ball joint. She's a little chewy. We're gonna press our new one in and get what's left of the old one out of there. Again, I've never taken one that's failed out before, so this, this is all new and exciting to me. New, not exciting. Well, this is gonna be fun to get off there with everything wanting to spin and twist, lift. Perfect. Are we gonna have to take that steering arm off to get that out of there? No. Oh. Let's 
Oh, for Jesus Christ. Tech tip of the day, don't let your ball joints fail. Fix them before then, because it's a lot easier. For Lucky, this nut will push against the steering arm. Push the top out of the ball joint right out of the spindle. We're usually not very lucky though. If it weren't for bad luck, we have no luck at all, right Duff? We'll either strip the top half of that bolt off, or it's pushing it out. I think it stripped the threads out, personally. What do I know? All right, now you wanna hit right here. Hopefully that pushes that right out of there. We need a bigger hammer, but we'll use the valve adjuster, because that's what we got. Ow, don't miss. Bada bing, bada boom. Bada bing, bada boom, there she is. Now we gotta figure out how to get that hole. We should have done that before we screwed the threads up. My bad. So let's put the old locking pliers on here. See if we can hold it. Oh yeah, we definitely screwed those threads up. Oopsies. I got a fix for that though. The old death wheel is gonna take care of you. Got it. I'm just gonna press the new one in. Put it all back up. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Put a little coil in the hole first. You know, lube up the hole. You don't want to ram it in dry. We need a new can of coil. Let's clear a little grease and road grime out of here. So we got a good spot for our adapter to sit. Like that. Let's sit there. It's got a hole for that to come through. This will push against the bottom. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. We'll even lube up the shank first. Okay, so how can we possibly screw this up? I'll let you know in a minute. Hey, if my arm's in the way when I'm doing any of this, or my head, or whatever, just yell at the screen, I'll move. Oh yeah. Now just please go in straight. I want to say something, but I don't want to jinx it, so. All right. Where's Das Boot? It's Das Boot! Put our boot on there. Put our grease circ. That one here in the bottom. Come on, boot. Go to your home. Do you know where your home is? Go home! That's your home! Are you too good for your home? Answer me! Oh, for cheese and rice. Push it on. Oh, yeah, now you're going on the sucker. Very nice. Whoa, whoa, very nice. Now the problem is going to be getting this slid back on there. Because the lower control arm's got to go up in order to get this on there. And when we lift the lower control arm up, the whole car's going to want to go up. <clears throat> I got a feeling. I'm sure being dragged around with this wheel laying there didn't screw up the alignment. I'm sure that upper ball joint really loved it too. Can this possibly go this easy? Nope. Lower control arm's gotta go up. So here's our debacle. I got the hydraulic floor jack on this lower control arm. The weight of the car is off the jack stand. And we still have several inches. Plus, I don't think we could get it to go in there because the lower control arm hits the ball joint. You have to tip the ball joint out and then slip the spindle on to the ball joint. So I think we're going to have to split it up top, hook the bottom first, and then hook the top, hopefully. And we still might have to get creative and tie things together, you know, because the spring here is doing its job. So I don't even know if I do have a spring compressor, but it seems like it never works and it's scary and there just isn't room for it. So this is a good way to die. A good thing to have was a chunk of ready rod, pull the shock out here and put a chunk of ready rod all the way through the lower control arm up to the frame rail and then just suck her down. 
but I think we still got to split it there because like I said this ball joint has to sit in this crevice over in here and we're not going to get it in there so let's uh, take this guy apart <laughs> And you don't want to let it hang on that uh, break hose. Got it. So, now, we tip that ball joint out. Slide that on. Come on now. What's your problem? You do not have to take the backing plates off to get these on. Oh. Here's our current situation. This ball joint and lower control arm is to sit in this little pocket down here in the backing plate. And the backing plate does not want to slide in there. Maybe we take it this way? I don't know. I really don't want to take that backing plate off though to make it work. And that's the only way I'm seeing. What if we walk it in? This is the dumbest thing ever. Well. I guess we gotta pull the backing plate off the spindle. Freaking awesome. Well done, Buick Engineering. Well done. In theory, all we gotta do is take these two bolts out and the backing plate will come off. So, let's see what happens. They also hold the steering arm on. All right, okay. Guessing that one too. I kind of figured something as critical as your brakes would be held on by more than two bolts. Final answer. All right, let's persuade it a bit. There. I don't think we even got to take it all the way out. Just enough. Sneak it by. There. It's so over the lower ball joint. Put a nut on it before we lose that. Are you kidding me? The nut is the wrong size? So here's what Moog sent us for parts. These three bolts, which I have no idea what they do. That would be for like a bolt-in style ball joint. A cotter key, which I'm starting to guess if that's even going to fit. And a grease zerk, which hopefully fits. And this castle nut. This looks like about a, a half inch castle nut. Yep. Uh, and we need... A 9 16 castle nut. Maybe even a 5 ace. So, you really missed the boat on that one there, Moog, with your K5075. And of course, we screwed up the castle nut, taking the other one apart by ramming it into the spindle. So that's just how my day is going. Good news is, I don't throw much away, so I'm going to go see what we can find in our stash. And we're going to go throw this one in there for, you know, maybe another future F up. Cause there'll be more. This won't be our last rodeo. Tech tip of the day, a 15 16 wrench goes on a 15 16 nut, which is a 5 ace thread, usually. Let's see if that thread's on. Woohoo! <laughs> now I can go underneath, snug that up. Put this back together and work on our upper ball joint. Ha! Ah, we got her all buttoned up. The lower ball joint, that is. And we got our backing plate reattached. Now we got to figure out how to get this ball joint hooked back up. And this is the way I always do it. I always hook the bottom and then the top. I've watched guys struggle and hook the top and then the bottom. In this case, you couldn't even do it because it, it wouldn't fit into that pocket backing plate well I suppose you could if you took the backing plate off never mind never mind but this is the way I always do it bottom then the top I don't know I'm probably wrong as usual so I'm gonna put some tension on that jack till it comes off the stand and I'll show you just how close this doesn't get you know the way to resolve that is just cut a couple coils so I mean not only does your car look cooler it's also easier to hook up your uh, ball joints to your spindle tech tip of the day Another reason to lower your car. Right, Duff? Before we even attempt it, let's put our rubber back on our shaft. Always want to put your rubber on the shaft first, kids. Oh, my rubber slid off. Too much lube. So, 
as the Cyclops will show you. Uh, we're still a solid three inches from being where we need to be. We could take the bump stop out of there, but that's, we might need that if we're gonna go jump some approaches. So how can we do this? What kind of sketchy things can we dream up? If we had some steel tie downs or some type of anchors in the floor, we could anchor the frame down and jack up on the control arm and get it closer to it. But we don't. We could put a bunch of ballast on the frame, but that seems really dumb and hard to do. So let's get a chain and put a chain underneath the jack and over the frame so it can't go anywhere. Seems like a pretty harebrained idea. Just might work. Brilliant! Look at this sketchiness. Got a chain over the control arm, which goes over the frame. It's down underneath the bottom of the jack. Yeah. Things are really gonna happen for us now. Duff, you might wanna keep your distance. That's a good spot. Hiding underneath and behind the F1, which is now all of a sudden profusely leaking transmission fluid from the left front tire. <sighs> That's for another day though, if we're still alive. Time to do some sketchy. Do da, do da. Here goes nothing. As I jack it up, the control arm's gonna go up so far, and then when the car starts going, that chain's gonna limit it from going up. See? Chain's tight. I'm already hitting that ball joint. I bet Watch West work is watching this and cringing right now. I bet a lot of you are cringing right now. It's gonna be fine. It's a good chain. Look at that! Look at that! Just look at it! There it is. That's all we needed. A bada bing, a bada boom. Tech tip of the day. Uh, get the old cotter key out of the hole before you get a bunch of tension on a chain. Right? You wanna go fetch me up a drill and a real small drill bit? That'd be great. Give me back my freaking punch. Oh man. Oh, we got a real short drill bit. But we got the uh, whole cotter key out of there, so thanks for your sacrifices, little buddy. First broken one in that set too, son of a biscuit. Now, let's put our castle on, move on with our lives. Well, that tire looked a lot less flat when it didn't have any weight on it. Right, pal? He's like, hey, are we gonna go for that R-I-D-E yet? Just begging. Anywho, see how that wheel looks like it's perpendicular, parallel? That's what I mean, parallel. With the uh, line of travel, that one is too. So we didn't even wank up the old tie rods when we were dragging it across the yard with one wheel doing the old killed ear broken wing thing. So, I'm gonna go wash up, because I don't know where this grease came from, somewhere underneath there, but it has not come off. So I'm gonna try to get that off there, and then we're gonna see if this thing will run. It's been a few days, and we're waiting for parts, and then we'll see if it moves. Right, Duff? That's a good idea. That's a great idea. Stay tuned. Look at how squeaky clean my hands are. I use the ch -ch 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 cherry bomb by Zep. I like it. it. Smells good too. You know, before we start this thing and try to drive it, let's see if it's got any brakes. Let's open the master cylinder because I guarantee it's dry and try putting some fluid into it first, at least. Come on. Oh, well, that's good that that came loose. I bet there's about a half a percent chance there's fluid in there. Oh, it's clean though. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful in there. 
like a nice fresh raw cast. Let's put a splash of brake fluid in there before we go and hit the pedal. Just for S's and G's. Look at this amazing pour. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. All right, Duff, I'm gonna try the brake pedal. He don't care. He don't need no brakes where he's going. Yeah. They go to the floor. Well, not to the floor, but I'm pretty sure they're bottoming out and they don't want to return. Because, I mean, of course, that fluid had to have gone somewhere. Oh, well. You don't need brakes. We gotta do something about that headliner, though. That's putrid. Ugh. Bad idea. Ugh. Nasty. Oh, that's nasty. All right, let's see if the thing still runs. All right, turn the key on, see what happens. Also, I did top off the engine oil, you know, from all that stuff that sprayed under the floor. We lose spark again. Nope. Oh, yeah, no accelerator pump. The hot sauce is too far away. We got brake clear. Still runs, let's top off the power steering, see if that works. A little air in the tires because they're a little flat just on the bottom side. You know, we don't wanna blow out a ball joint or casing if you're into that sleeper dude stuff. Go check him out. Let's take this thing for a rip. I'm gonna move some garbage out of the way. We're close though, real close. So those boat tanks are a real pain because you gotta strap them to the windshield or the grill or so on and so forth. So since this thing's only been off the road 27 years, which generally speaking for the trash we bring home, it's uh, not very long. So I figured we'd check out the tank. We uh, took the old test long in there and every time I dipped it, it was getting covered in crud. So that pretty much tells me that if there's crud covering it in the neck, it's uh, not bueno. So I don't know if I can show you this, but let's try to get in there real nice and deep like. That's it, boy. Get in there nice and deep like. You can see, look at all the crud that's just coming up on the test lawn. Yeah, and that's like barely getting into the tank. I can see the bottom, it's, it's pretty much empty, but there is a ton of varnish in there. So we probably could drop the tank and pressure wash it out and it might be okay. We'd be chasing filters for a while, but for what we're doing, it ain't worth it. We're just gonna have to find a spot to put our boat tank so that it's uh, not in the fan or on the exhaust or dragging by the uh, fuel hose. Sound good? We tried. Also, now you know where the uh, fuel filler neck is on a 1963 Buick Riviera. Right behind the trailer hitch. Bada bing, bada boom. I'm gonna clean up the schlong. You know, you don't wanna put the schlong away dirty. We should start this thing up and uh, check the transmission fluid before we do anything. Or we just start it up and put it in gear and see what happens. That seems like a better idea, doesn't it? Yeah, but it's not the right thing to do. So we'll fire it up, check the dipstick, Jimmy, and we'll go from there. Oh, you hear the power steering whining now. Well, it was. Sucked her right down, it probably needs more ATF.
Well, moment of truth, Duff. Let's see if it uh, moves back and forth. She was about a gallon low on ATF. Not good. This thing actually doesn't sound super terrible. What do you think? Oh, it sounds like crap. Yeah, you're probably right. No, you stay out there. Let me get the poop on me. Oh, power steering kind of came back. That was really low too. All right. Somebody got the plate in backwards? R is way up there. I feel like by 63 they had that figured out. Oh, there's. These have reverse way at the back. Sure enough. So what does it go? Neutral, park, drive low, reverse. There's the indicator, but it's upside down and I can't read it anyway. Anywho. We kind of have brakes. How neat is that? How neat is that? Pretty neat, huh, dog? by kinda, that's pretty loose. Can we go forward? Yeah. Let's uh, get her outside and blow some poopy out of here. What do you say about that? Okay. We did the thing with the gas tank. Uh, we drove over it again. Whoopsies. Let's try this again. Crisis averted. I'm pretty sure that's why these things have the factory cowl induction is so you can run your fuel line right through there also I think we got a casualty on the uh, power steering pump because it's losing a lot of fluid there never mind that that's gas that is not the floor drain it's fine Greta how dare you let's just set this hood down here and see if we can't mark out that positive wire close this too now let's uh, see if we can't make it out the door to blow this thing out close the uh Rear windows work? Of course they do. Duff, you want to push that one down? There we go. Okay, we're just going to leave that one. How about this side? Nothing? How about back here? Okay, we're just going to leave that too. Look at him just waiting for us to get out there. Such a distinguished gentleman. Oh, Baxter, you are my little gentleman. That's a sickly sounding horn. Ugh, hantavirus. Does this seat go back any further? People were shorter back then. Nope, that's it. Heaven forbid if you were six foot one in 1963. Yeah, we don't want our fuel spilling all over the hood or our hot engine. Oh, you just want in there so bad, don't you? All right, I'm gonna get uh, some compressed air and maybe see if I can even find a mask. Hot diggity dang, the camera died of course, I don't know how far in it was, but I was blowing out that uh, mouse hotel for like the last half hour. And it still keeps coming out of there, doesn't it? Why would you want to ride one of those things? But it looks a lot better. We did pull the back seat out. There was a lot of mouse house in there. Somebody put some indoor outdoor carpet. And somebody also put some new floor pans in. Galvanized, nothing but the finest. As you can tell, it's uh, about dark 30 because the sun's right there. So we got just enough time to do a lap around the yard, huh, Duff? Go for a rip. Make sure we uh, wash this thing up. Ugh, I wish we could get the seats out because that's holding that indoor outdoor carpet back there. I don't feel like doing that. This is no fun. Okay, let's go for a ride. What the heck? I don't want to deal with the headliner Haunta anymore. I don't think we're ever going to get all that stuff out of there. I really don't want to tear the headliner out because I'm lazy mostly. That'll just create more of a mess. So, we're gonna just gorilla tape this up and it'll look like, just like tuck and roll if we, if we do it right. Right, Duff? Yeah. Okay, mostly sealed that poop hole up. That's the main uh, fecal entrance. Or is it an exit? I don't know. Depends on who you're referring to. I bet these seats are pretty dang flush in there. 
Oh, yeah. Just like that uh, Asian gal they used to do on Gas Monkey Garage. Sue? Is that her name? I should go in the headliner business. Well, let's see if we can make it around the yard. Get her aimed back in the right direction. Are you uh, just going to ride in the back? You can ride up front if you want. No? Okay. I'm going to leave in the back seat out for now. Hey, dude, you should ride up front so everybody can see you on YouTube because that's what they all watch for. Come on. Come up here. Come here. Duff. Come here. He's like, but you never let me ride up front. Yes, I do. All right, let's hook up our fuel pump. And he jumps back into the back. What a goon. Okay. Oh, we should probably... We don't need a starter wire. The question is, will it start on its own? Or do we need to get some brake cleaner? <laughs> Here's your answer. Blow it up. I guess you're gonna ride back there. Well, it's probably a better view. I suppose that's where the for sale sign was. 180 pissies. Look at that oil pressure. 50. Might have been because it was like a quart and a half low. Four. Oh, this is like the coolest little console shifter oh it's got a speed minder in it I was like why is that needle bent that's for the speed minder I believe what do I know I should read a book once figured all this stuff out you ready put her in low range and it's dead we should probably hook that purple wire up under the hood so that we can start it from in here what do you think about that not a bad idea, huh? Okay. All right, let's try this again. This thing's torquey. from a high to a low so fast. Can you bring that brake cleaner with? Well, I can feel the fuel pump running because it's vibrating against the firewall, which is against my foot. So, I mean, that's working. Should we check it out? I think so. This thing's good. Real good. It also looks better in the dark, too. So, what happened? Let's hook up our cheater starter loser switcher again. Key is on. What is your problem? Oh, the fuel pump wire is now off. Need to hook that back up. I'm gonna prime up the bowl. You know it's full when it starts coming out the accelerator pump hole here. There it is. Arriba! Ay, 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 ay! Speedy Gonzalez! Yeah! Oh, we should have washed off the windshield. Let's stop being dumb and put her back in the shop. Yeah. Who am I kidding? Probably don't want to whip any donuts with the uh, fuel tank. Just resting on the uh, windshield wiper. Oh. We're now further away from the shop. I think we gotta do some some tune-up edge, huh? I think that carburetor's not happy. All right, I'm gonna go get some brake cleaner. Hopefully that brings it back to life. Oh yeah, look at that duff. Freaking spun them both. Good stuff. 
Too bad that diff doesn't fit in any 55 to 64 GM cars. It's Chevrolet cars. It's, I think it's a big 9.3. So it only fits in Buicks? Maybe, it, maybe BOP are all the same. I think they might be. Somebody will comment down below. All right. Let's get some brake cleaner. Take that. Oh, cripes. We don't have the loser switch hooked up anymore. Let's see if fuel delivery is our issue. Apparently not. Leave our key switch on. Hook our loser switch back up, see if we lost spark. All kinds of spark. What the French, toast? Flooded. Okay, now we gotta get her back to the shop. Enough of these shenanigans. You coming with or what? Okay, I'd stay there too. Might be a little warm. Only 195 according to the Niehoff gauge though. What do you think? Is the rib pretty good, Duff? I think so too. We might have to have a celebratory sandwich. Okay, I'm gonna unhook the battery and call her a night. Maybe we'll wash her up tomorrow. And probably have to play with that carbonator a little bit too. I guess we could get real crazy and bleed some brakes even. That sounds preposterous. Shot's so good. Too bad the body is so chewy, Duff. All right, I'm gonna have a sandwich, clean up shop. See you tomorrow. All right, another day with Patrick Swayze, the Riviera or whatever we're calling this thing. Pulled the seats out. Cause uh, the, it just reeked of mouse. And so we got it a little bit better now. And you can see this galvanized sheet metal that's just sitting in place. Uh, that's, a, that's the escape hatch or the, the Flintstone hole or whatever. So the floors up front are pretty chewy and then right by this cross member where conveniently the seat bolt's in and uh, the other bolt conveniently snapped off. So this should be fun. But yeah, the rear floors are surprisingly good, but up front, no bueno. We got our fuel tank moved inside. Conveniently, there's a hole over there to uh, run our fuel line through. Hooked it up to the blower motor fuse, so I turn the key on, and our pump runs. So, now we can wash it off a bit, and go for a rip ski. Well, we should figure out a way to attach the seats. There is one bolt right there that I can hold mine down with. Duff's probably just gonna ride in the back anyway, so who knows? We'll figure something out. Oh, I wonder if that's what those other, the uh, other heater hose going through the firewall. I wonder if there's a heater core back here for the rear vents. Looks like there's a switch back here for it even. Okay, let's uh, put some seats in, do some washing. What do you think, Duff? Should we go for a rip ski? Seats are in, one bolt on each side, good enough. Hopefully it starts. We are uh, running out of daylight, so we should probably make this happen. We don't wanna be walking home in the dark, do we, Duff? Yeah, good point. All right, let's do this. It doesn't clean up that good. We got the fecal matter. There was a huge coon turd there, which stuck itself to the bone rough rider over there. But we washed him off again. And then it was uh, pretty packed in, in the uh, lip around the trunk. Other than that, no expectations. We're, uh, 
it, it was just, it is what it is. Pressure washing. Leave that to that freaking guy down in Oklahoma. We did clean up the windshield. Unfortunately, that's a really nice windshield, but somebody ran the wipers too long and that stainless scratched her all up. And I can see why the floors are bad. When I clean the windshield up here, there's a bunch of white caulking, so the windshield was leaking. So somebody, instead of fixing it the right way, seam sealed it and uh, that's probably why the floors are shot. Okay, ready to go for an R.I.D.E. You know it. Are you gonna sit up front this time? Oh, my door. My seat hits the door, so. Clearly, uh, one bolt doesn't put it in the right spot. But this thing would sound good with a tune up good exhaust. 50 pounds oil pressure cold, brake lights on, you ready to rock? I don't have any mirror over here. I'll adjust this one. Oh yeah, there's no neutral to hit. You're going right to low range when you shift her at. It's going to be real good to shift her to neutral. We're good, right though? How much gas we got? Not much. A little test lap around the yard just to make sure she's totally roadworthy before we take her on a 30 mile jog. Oh, there ain't even a haze behind this thing. This thing's good. I don't know if we're keeping it. So if you want this, look at the description down below. We'll put a price and availability. And you can get a hold of us, repair at gmail.com. But it won't chirp them. in a second. So it was pretty, pretty straight. Got 45 like nobody's business. A little vibration. I'm sure it's not those tires. Brakes are not that good. Uh, even uh, not at speed. They're not. Let's roll her on back there. What a gorgeous night though. Horns tasseled out. Somebody find me a gooder one of these. Like Rough around the edges, kind of like us. Not too nice. Not like a $25,000 car. Find us like a good $10,000, $15,000 a year. This thing drives so good. We put brakes and tires on this thing. Give her a tune up, fuel tank, exhaust, belt hoses. This is getting pretty long. But it's a start. Where are you going to find a run and drive? Barn Fine Riviera that's been sitting since 1995. 27 freaking years since this thing's been cruising down the gravel. What do you think, Duff? If that wing window wasn't there, you're gonna really get your neck out there. Ooh, you gotta be careful. Dropping her down, went into low, ah, uh, cut reverse real quick. Don't worry. I guess the Dynaflow, that's what the Buick used to have. I don't know if that's what they still called them. It's around. Don't teach your dogs to chase cars that drive by. Good God, we locked the brakes up. Max, stay off the road. Pissing boogies. Stop, look at the cat. Meow, kitty. Oh, we floor it though. It starts running poopy. I wonder if it's just because it runs out of gas in the car. Because now it's. Now she's running good again. 45. This thing just sails down the road. Ooh, there ain't a lot of fuel in that tank, though. Maybe that's why it's starving. We mash it, it all goes to the back, and the boat tank ain't picking it up anymore. How good would this thing be with. Cruise and AC, freaking minty. I'm getting old. I like the uh, AC and such. That cow's got horns.
Get yourself a Buick Nailhead with a limited slip. This thing comes right around. I am thoroughly impressed. I've owned a lot of Nailheads, but I don't think I've ever driven one. Pretty sure I haven't. I've had them running, driving around the yard, but maybe not even driving around the yard. They just ran in the cars. These things are ooh, tipped over our fuel tank. These things are torque monsters. Man, are these 401? So yeah, like 63, what did a Chevy have? 327s? I suppose you could get a 409. But like, yeah, this thing would annihilate a 283 or a 327. I don't think my wagon with a uh, pretty peppy little 327 would hold a candle to this thing. Right up there with the uh, 394s. I've never had a 390 with an automatic. But uh, I had a 64 Galaxy with a 390 to 3 speed. That thing freaking boogie. I think I would have to put like an overdrive or a different three speed in here just to. I don't like the way they, they shoot the shit. The park, neutral, drive, low. It's annoying. My word, Duff. Well, it, it does too for a while, and then it just goes to the uh, left. I tell you what, Buicks. It's where it's at. I need a sandwich. I need it. We're celebrating. Let's have a sandwich, Duff. We did Buick things. They were so good that guess what? We're having a legit sandwich. From July 19th of 2021, this beer is one year and uh, oh, let's wipe the crud out of the top. One year and 10 days old. Uh oh, what was that that we broke? Oh, just a, just a chippy clip. All right, they don't make these anymore. You can't find them. You'll find them online, but they, uh, they don't exist. They won't ship them to you. It's all make believe, fake. Grin from ear to ear. This is this is good. 
Jeff says he wants you guys to see the burnout from the outside, but he says he wants to be in the car when we do it. So here's an outside view burnout for you. Hold up, let's do this. Yeah, put a back seat in it. So you can have your lady friends. What do you think about that, Duff? Not bad for some crusty old Buick. Oh, it's just blowing the rubber around. Hopefully they uh, don't call the fire department on us. Filled her up pretty good. Hopefully that's the first of many shop burnouts and cars that do burnouts. And first of many Numerous burnouts that the uh, Buick Riviera is going to be doing. Lazy Swayze? I don't know. I don't know what we're calling this thing. We got to give this thing a name. What do you think we're calling it, Duff? Awesome. That's what I think we're calling it. All right. Well, I guess we can't go back to work for a while. We got to let the shop clear out. So, yeah. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. It was really awesome to get a 1963 Buick Riviera. First year of the Riviera. Back on the road for the first time in 27 years. We did some burnouts, did some donuts. These things are awesome. So, appreciate you watching the video. Check out the swag, link down below. Get yourself some to support Duff's treat habits and my sandwich habits, you know. And if you really wanna own this thing, we'll put a price down in the description and availability if we still got it. I'd love to hang on to it, but we can't keep them all. This thing's pretty freaking awesome to drive. She's a little rough around the edges, just like us, but hey, it is what it is. Didn't take a whole lot to get this thing back on the road. The brakes were actually working. We had a broken ball joint we had to fix, cleaned up the points, fuel line, boat tank. Yeah, and she's, she is our new burnout champion. Right up there with the uh, Olds Cutlass 442. But Duff says we gotta get out of here and get some fresh air, so. Remember, it doesn't matter how you get it done so long as you're having fun. Buicks. Fun. All right, let's get back at her.